Today on BRS TV, we're going to cover the top 15 most common RODI system upgrades. We'll hit on booster pumps, permeate pumps, TDS meters, filter monitors, and even filter upgrades. It's going to go quick, so get ready. Hi, I'm Ryan, host of BRS TV, where each week we cover a new topic related to reefing. This week, we're going to do a top 15 on RO system upgrades, starting with number one in the most popular upgrade, TDS meters. TDS meters measure the total dissolved solids in water. It does this by measuring the electrical conductivity between two probes. It won't measure absolutely everything in the water, but for our needs it gives us a pretty good idea of the water's purity. For the reef tank, we're always looking for zero TDS water, which is extremely pure. The reason TDS meters are so popular is because what good is an RO system if you have no idea if it's working or not? They're cheap, super easy to use, most of them have an in and an out probe, and most people will install this on the in and out of their DI resin. This will measure the water quality coming out of your RO system, how it's functioning, as well as the water coming out of the DI resin, which is ultimately the zero TDS water you're going to use. You can also put a probe before the whole system to measure your home's TDS, but that doesn't change much in most cases and doesn't need to be monitored as closely. Number two, float knot or shutoff valves. These two items work in conjunction to shut off your RO system when your container of water is full. I can say with almost 100% certainty, if you're not already using one of these, you have or will have flooded water all over your floor at some point. It's easy to get distracted and forget your RO system is on. The float works by simply raising as the water level goes up and plugging the hole. Thing is, while this shuts off the product water flow, it doesn't shut the whole system down so the wastewater keeps flowing. To shut it down, we have to install the auto shutoff valve. This valve uses the pressure built up in the product water line when the float goes up to trigger an internal valve which shuts off the supply of water to the whole system and shuts it down. Number three is a pressure gauge. Almost every major problem related to RO systems is somehow related to water pressure. To function properly, most RO membranes require close to 50 PSI. Many can function all the way down to 35, but you get decreased flow rates in water quality. At first glance, it might seem wise to install the gauge before the entire system, which will give you your home's water pressure, and while this might be interesting to know, it isn't the ideal location. A better location is on the line between the last carbon block and the membrane. This will give you the pressure feeding the membrane, which is what we want to know. The most common causes of low pressure is your sediment filters or carbon blocks are clogged, you forgot your flush kit valve open, and in some cases your home's water pressure might be lower than ideal. Number four is a booster pump. Most people won't need one of these, but if your home's water pressure is lower than ideal and you want to boost performance of your system, this is the easiest way to do it. More or less, all you need to do is put the unit before your system and it will boost your home's water pressure. Since higher water pressures typically boost membrane performance, they're frequently used in conjunction with high flow membranes or dual membrane kits where we typically like to see 60 to 65 PSI. Number five is a flush kit. A flush kit is designed to flush deposits off the surface of the membrane to increase membrane life, production rates, and water quality. Basically, it's just a valve you open that bypasses your flow restrictor and increases the flow rate over the membrane surface. I typically open mine for a few minutes before and after each use, or as often as I think about it. Number six is an auto flush valve. This is similar to a flush kit, but works automatically by auto flushing once an hour while the system's in use. An auto flush like this will prolong the membrane life significantly. It's most commonly used in conjunction with a booster pump installation, but can also be installed with its own power supply and pressure switch. Number seven is a 150 gallon per day upgrade kit. This kit adds a second 75 gallon per day membrane, which runs in series and essentially doubles the output without increasing the waste water and essentially cuts the waste to product water ratio in half. So faster production and less waste. Only real requirement for this is you have 60 PSI feeding the membranes and your home starting TDS shouldn't be much higher than 250. We'll have an in-depth video on how this works and installation soon, so keep an eye out. Number eight is filter upgrades. RO sediment filters, carbon blocks, and membranes are all fairly universal. For most people, it's pretty difficult to know if your brand is any good, and there are a ton of cheap imported ones out there. If the ones you're using have a picture of a fish on them or an aquarium brand on the outside, you're likely overpaying for a poor quality filter. Best bet is to use a brand that's made in the USA and NSF certified if possible. The KX Industries brand is pretty much universally accepted by a wide variety of industries as the king of carbon blocks, and what we suggest in most cases. If you have chloramines in your water, we suggest the Chlor Plus by Pentec. 
The sediment filter is the least expensive filter on the whole system, but can have a pretty big impact on how the whole system functions. If these filters clog quickly, it will reduce the pressure feeding the membrane and how your system performs. A good sediment filter will also properly protect the more expensive carbon blocks from clogging prematurely. Primarily, it's just going to capture sediment and dirt, but a good one will have a really high capacity for dirt and sediment by providing a graded density where the filter can capture particles throughout the entire thickness of the filter. We personally recommend that PureTrex filters produced by GE as one of the best options. However, they also make a premium filter called the RoSave.Z, which has half the pressure drop and can last twice as long. Honestly, the graded density is something you can feel almost immediately upon touching one of these. The number nine upgrade is a filter monitor. While a pressure gauge is the easiest way to know if your sediment filter is clogged, the carbon blocks are based off the volume of water that passes through them, and most membranes should be changed every three years. So filters like the KX CTO should last around 6,000 gallons of water, and the CTO Plus up to 20,000 if they're kept free of sediment. Keep in mind that all the water in the system passes through the carbon blocks, so the 6,000 is waste plus product. You can see how this can be fairly confusing and why most people just end up changing out the filters every six months or so. The filter monitor has something called a volumizer on it, which measures the water flow through the system, and you can set it to notify you when to change each filter, and in the case of the membrane, you can set it to notify you in three years, something I'd normally never remember. Pretty easy to see how something like this could save money in the long run, as well as increase the quality of water produced. I think this is particularly useful if your water contains chloramines where breakthrough happens much quicker, and it's critical the carbon blocks are well maintained. The number 10 upgrade is dual DI resin canisters. If your water supply has really high levels of phosphate, this is almost required. Phosphate is one of the harder things for RO membranes and DI resin to remove, so we want to maximize the contact time with resin to remove as much as possible. By doubling the canisters, you can dramatically increase the contact time. Because resin cartridges deplete from the bottom up, if the cartridge is three-fourths depleted, you've cut the contact time with effective resin down to one-fourth of a full cartridge. With two cartridges, as long as you change the first cartridge when it's depleted, there'll always be a complete cartridge and long contact time. In fact, many people like to swap them when the first cartridge is depleted, so the second one is now the first, and the second cartridge has brand new fresh resin. Number 11 is a three-way ball valve. I know this seems simple, but it's tremendously convenient for two purposes. First one is most people have two water storage bins, one for mixing salt water and one for holding fresh water. A three-way valve allows you to switch between the two quickly and easily with the least amount of valves. This is also a nice piece to have right after the RO membrane. This will allow you to quickly and easily bleed off the initial high TDS that comes out of the membrane when turning the system on, commonly referred to as TDS creep. This initial spurt of high TDS water can consume a disproportionately high portion of resin, so a valve like this can pay for itself pretty quickly. Number 12 is a leak controller. Honestly, this might be a bit higher because they're becoming very popular. No fitting thread or valve is perfect, they can all develop leaks over time. Take a look at the location of your RO system, and if the worst thing that can happen from a leak is you'll have to grab a mop, forget it. If a leak can cause multiple thousands of dollars in damage by ruining your floors, carpet, cabinetry, or the ceiling, a leak controller can save you a fortune. Protect your home and likely your marriage. The leak controller works by simply shutting off the water supply and setting off an audible alarm if the probe detects water. Number 13 is new fittings and fitting clips. It's pretty common for people who purchased an older system that came with older screw-on Jayco style fittings or leaky imported push connects to replace them with something higher quality. John Guest is a pretty solid option for push connects, but we prefer the dual O-ring Murlocs. The dual O-ring not only provides the best seal that we've found, but also much more leak resistant when the tube is accidentally pulled to the side. Adding these cheap clips to push connects will also dramatically reduce any chances of leaks. Number 14 is a drinking water add-on kit. I'm sure you'll agree the more you learn about city tap water, the less you actually want to consume it. Disinfectants like chlorine and chloramines are required to make the water safe, but they come with their own issues related to disinfection byproducts, not to mention the hundreds of other chemicals and unhealthy elements found in tap water. Once you get used to drinking RO water, tap water begins to taste like a mouthful of chemicals. Honestly, you can even taste it when somebody uses tap water to make ice cubes. I'm sure we'll get a ton of people in the comments area down below who agree. 
Another nice side effect of this is the RO system purchase for the tank can get past the spouse much easier if it's pitched as a healthy alternative for the family. That said, while the system upgrade kit is most people's preferred solution because it's less expensive, most of the time you're better off purchasing two systems, one for reefing and one for drinking. Now that might sound silly, but most of the time the location you want drinking water is nowhere near where you want to produce and store aquarium water. Most people want the drinking water system under their kitchen sink and the reefing system in their basement or garage. Long runs of RO tubing are not only impossible for many people, but also significantly impact system efficiency. You'll have to evaluate this based on your home and personal desires. The 15th and final upgrade is the permeate pump. This pump is used to help overcome the back pressure from the pressurized RO storage tank found at most drinking water systems. This type of pump uses the wastewater flow to power the pump and a really neat concept. As the RO tank fills, the pressure increases inside the tank which makes it harder to fill. The back pressure will reduce the efficiency of the system and increase the waste to product water ratio. Adding a permeate pump will help fight this and reduce the wastewater produced. It's important to note that the permeate pump has no real value on a reefing system, only on drinking water systems that have pressurized storage tanks. That wraps up today's episode. If you have any questions or comments, check out that comments area down below. If this is your first time with us and you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. See you all next week with another episode of BRS TV.